Holy Spirit. And around this time of year, we all get together with family and friends, and we often remember good times and things of the past. Quite often, I have a hard time remembering what my Matusha can remember. I have an awful memory. It seems I can't remember much of what happened when the kids were young. <clears throat> with each passing year, it doesn't seem to be getting any better. I just have to take her at her word for what she says is true. I may not be the best at remembering things, but at least I remember to raise my kids in church. Up until 10 or 13 years ago, however, we attended a Protestant church. We didn't all convert to Orthodoxy at the same time. It was nothing like that, but one by one it eventually happened. So many of our memories of past holidays are of a Western flavor. Despite being East or West, New Calendar or Old Calendar, we're all familiar with the story of the Nativity. How the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, the angels appearing to the shepherds, baby in a manger, the inn that was too crowded to help the young couple, how the wise man came from the east following a star, leading them to the newborn king. Each year the story is told, and although we were faithful Christians, once the season was over and the tree was down, we tended to put everything in the back of our minds until next year. The only way to learn about Christianity was to rely on what the preacher had to speak about on any given Sunday. In orthodoxy, it's not so much like that. Orthodoxy tends to keep things alive and at the front and center of your mind all year round. We have the Holy Fathers of the Church, their teachings, the seven councils, we have the Holy Scriptures, and then we have Holy Tradition. And that tradition is a continuous flow of remembrance. Remembrance of the life of Christ, the Holy Apostles, and remembrance of the Saints. The entire life of the Church keeps us in remembrance and tends to be a challenge for my forgetfulness. Each Sunday we dedicate the resurrection of Christ. Mondays, we remember the holy bodiless powers, the angels and archangels. Tuesdays, we are dedicated to the prophets, forerunner of Baptist John, most of all. Wednesdays, the, the cross and of Jesus' betrayal of Christ. And that is the reason we fast, because of the cross. Thursday, the holy apostles, the hierarchs. Friday, we fast again, remembrance of the cross and the day of Christ's crucifixion. Saturdays we set aside for all saints, the mother of God and those who have departed this life, which is why when we have liturgy on Saturdays, I have an extra litany for the departed. This is considered the weekly cycle of the church. We can break this down even further into daily cycles, specific watches throughout the day. We have four movable feasts, 12 fixed feasts, eight specific tones for the week, and we fast between 180 and 200 days of the year. All this combines give us a liturgical year that begins on September 1st, and whoever said the church was born. The church has given us a way of remembrance to help us in the path towards salvation. All this mixed with our daily prayers, confession, and frequent communion gives us a rhythm. And we need to keep this rhythm going or we'll lose our footing from the narrow path. It's a rhythm, rhythm that flows counter to the culture we live in. Surprisingly enough, as I wrote this, as soon as I wrote the word rhythm, I remember a sermon from Father John. And so I quickly got on and I found this. Father John says, In Genesis, God establishes his rhythm in creation. He says, In the evening and the morning was the first day. This is odd because our day begins in the morning and ends in the evening. God seems to have his days backwards. The church has tried to maintain the rhythm of God in the way in which it worships. We do this because we know the rhythm of God's activity will bring salvation to our lives. So the church day begins in the evening at Vespers and ends the following morning with the conclusion of liturgy. Here is where the battle is waged. The world has its own rhythm, and this rhythm does not lead to holiness or salvation, but leads to death. The rhythm of the world is very powerful and very subtle, and we struggle between the rhythm of the world and the rhythm of the church. One way we can keep this rhythm that Father John speaks about is to keep in step with the church. To be out of step with the church is to be more in line with the cadence of the world. The constant reminders of Christ's love towards humanity give, given to us daily and weekly throughout the year keeps us in the rhythm. I know it's tough. I struggle myself. We fast a lot. We pray a lot. We do a lot of things in the Orthodox Church. Uh, St. Ambrose of Optina says, If you do not feel like praying, you have to force yourself. The Holy Fathers say that prayer with force is higher than prayer unforced. You do not want to, but you force yourself. The kingdom of heaven is taken by force. For all the years I've been Orthodox, I still have a lot to learn. But I know as long as I keep in step with the rhythm of the church, 
Now keep everything in remembrance that God has given us, the church, the loving church family, and his son at this time of the year. How in the world will we ever forget?